Look at that. Chicken and bacon. Hey, I gotta tell you something. It's nice when a guy comes in with a trailer and actually can back it up and then he can turn it around just fine. I don't know how many people come in with just a truck and they can't even figure it out. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys. Thank you. Gonna fix up third gen for his boy. Thank you guys. Welcome back to the channel guys. We are gonna be working on the, I call it the budget build dually, tow rig, six speed manual, high output, O2, second gen. Checks all the boxes, four wheel drive, all right? But, got this rig, it had uh, no brakes, no power steering. So I added fluid to it, everything worked. Had a couple slow leaks, thought I had fixed them, still there. So I'm gonna rip out the vacuum pump, power steering pump, we got new hoses, new hoses off of a good donor truck so we're gonna swap those on there today but let's we got to rebuild the vacuum pump too because if you're there might as well generally the power steering pumps i haven't actually had one fail that didn't get run without oil you know what i mean because you ran it without oil is what made it die this one's still working just fine we just got a leak i got a whole donor package that's out on the bench we're just gonna swap it out we can rebuild this one later. So let's get this truck fired up and it should start. It's parked up for a minute. So sometimes if I have a rig, it's a project or even not a project, some of those trucks over there, the ones in the back, you just disconnect the battery. That way it's not sitting there drawing on it. Let's make sure I put this back in there the correct way. That adds excitement to your morning that you don't like. You know, stuff starts cooking on the ground side if you hook these up backwards so i don't know if it's these lines or just a simple other lines that have they normally oh let's see if it's, you can see it right here it's like the fact uh, factory little crimp uh i think those are leaking on the other end but we're just getting oil down there uh it's a slow leak but i hate leaks and everything else seems to be pretty dang dry on this truck so let's just get that addressed so this thing's one step closer to going to a new home This truck turned out pretty dang sweet though. Realistically, I mean, I did like the standard stuff to it and added a couple goodies. Stuff that you absolutely should have on a VP truck. But she turned out real nice. Air condition works. It was hot. Luckily, this thing was parked out in a field. It didn't get taken by animals, which is nuts. 311,000 on the clock. Fires right up. Look at that oil pressure. I mean, it's cold, but dang. Can't complain about oil pressure being high. This is off of the donor truck that I got the pedals and the five speed swap from for the other rig. This was a perfectly good running driving truck. I'm gonna rebuild the vacuum pump as in new seals. That's to see if it's called rebuild. And we're just gonna take the hoses because trying to take the master and everything off, that's that's a shit show on its own. So I ain't gonna do the hydro boost or none of that. We're just gonna take the hoses, call it a day. I don't know. But look at all that nasty stuff on there. Hit it with some oven cleaner. There we 
go. That way you're not fumbling around with crap. Ah, stuff like this is gonna drive me nuts. I'm at the point right now where I, I feel like I'm busy enough that I get frustrated if I drop a bolt because I feel like that amount of time that I just lost is hurting the bottom line. I got a couple of customer bills that I need to knock out. Some of these trucks that are technically uh, flip rigs that I need to knock out, but people have been kind enough to say you got some projects to knock out of your own, such as a crew cab in there, which we're going to be priming that today. You'll see it in a second when we go in there. See that it's all masked off and ready to go, but my uncle, he helps me when I'm doing the paint job. He, uh, could be down there, so we just need to tackle this stuff. But I had to go inside the shop six, seven times because well, I grabbed the wrong wrench, put it that way. Here comes Piper Dog. Come, yep, she is all yanked apart. I got my turbine going back there, so it's warming up in here. There's a seal here. But you gotta press on the X key to get that out. Pushes this whole sleeve. And then this guy here. We'll get this cleaned up. And then I got a kit sitting right here. Sockets. One inch. Fits perfectly. Pops out. No stress, just ink right out. Good to good to go. Good to go. So when I was working on this truck right here, originally, I had the cab and everything off of it. I needed to do all this. So I just ordered some stuff online. But I happened to be at the house that day and I said, screw it, I need to work on this truck now. So the two kits that I ordered showed up weeks later and I had already went to town and bought the stuff. So these have just been shelved, which is fine by me, because I put one on Goldie, I put one on this truck. Little seals are kind of nice. Itch and an eight socket, flip it over to the dumb end. Yeah. Fully seated. No ring. This guy, I'll lube this up, put it back in the press, goes down in there. Don't forget this piece though, goes in there, boom. I do have uh, actual stuff, but these use the expensive inch and three eighths snap on. Prior to the press, I was beating on this with the side of a, uh, what did I use? a handle for a wire brush so I wouldn't mess up because that piece is aluminum I put it down in there sideways and beat on with a hammer <laughs> not that deal but it worked Uh, I'm gonna just take a bunch of stuff out of the way so I don't even have to uh, worry about it, you know what I mean? in there everything's working I'm gonna top off the fluids got to listen to a podcast so I just you get what you get I'm sorry so let's go ahead and add some antifreeze somehow when I was priming it I'm 
I'm thinking it's enough now, so. Topping all the fluids off on it. Like the, I don't know, guys that do this every single day, multiple styles of vehicles, this and that. It's, man, I wonder how much the level of warranty work comes back on stuff because there's a mess underneath there and I don't really see a way to avoid making such messes because, and I tried to take my time. I siphoned out the coolant so I could pop this rad hose off. I siphoned out the windshield washer fluid so that that didn't uh, contaminate, you know, the job site. <sighs> and every time you put a little bit of this in there and you pull the funnel out, it always, oh, pay attention to what you're doing. It always seems to, oh, there she is right there. Leak just a little bit more. So by the time you're done, you just got freaking leak everywhere. It's like, how much are you basing that you don't have an old leak still there or a new leak popping up because everything's just covered and stuff. What I'm trying to say is it'd be impractical for me trying to get this done right on just a, a quick turnaround budget, unless it's something of mine. If I could work on it a little bit, go hang out up the house, come back, mess around, just on it slow motion day like today and how is i still gotten fluid in there that's the same amount of fluid that came out why is it all going back well i'm taking her for a couple laps around the property after i pressure washed it all off for 20 minutes ran out of gas and the pressure washer had to go get gas and one thing after another five minute job takes 20. Feels good though. That's the power steering pump off that red 99 and the vacuum pump. Um, see the vacuum's working and check it. Yep, vacuum's working. Easy way to check. You got air coming out your vents right there. If the vacuum's not working, you only have defrost. Oh, I like this truck. I gotta put my hookup back on. I just. I figured out that ABS thing. That was a big item to check off the list. We'll double, triple check, make sure she's still not leaking. It's a, it's a slow, slow leak, but I just, I don't like leaks. So everything else seems to be on the up and up. Got the trans done. Front and rear diff all done. I should have checked it on this one. I have to double check now that I'm second guessing myself. Too many trucks going in now. Oil change done. Or I should be really, really good on this. Last thing is just make sure that's not leaking anymore and get rid of the ABS light, which seems to be a bigger deal than it should. I think this is the one that came with the truck. Pretty confident, but it's got molding in there. This can't be it. Am I losing my mind? Because this ain't the right one. This is for 12 valve with no power brakes it's got vacuums okay that's been up here a while that's the wrong one okay get your mind together sam what's going on here okay thought so i believe this is the one that came with the truck because i think i might have found out why that thing was leaking okay cool Yep, this is the one that came with the truck. This would be the correct unit because I was gonna throw the other one in the bin. I know why I was leaking and I know why they had the new one in there. I'm not really sure where that connects right there. What holds it? But the other one down there's been brazed. So that was our leak. Thought I was losing my mind there for a minute. So I got a early 12 valve, early second gen, 
uh, rig up there. But this, to me, do you think they factory raise it? No, that's somebody else has done that. That's why I was leaking right there. It's been brazed all over the back and everything. I wonder where this bolt's missing. Probably the bolt missing too. I just noticed that. <sighs> Is that why it's leaking? The damn bolt's missing? Okay. Okay, now that I'm getting my composure back and figuring some stuff out, somebody's definitely brazed this because those other ones sit in there different. And in the process, they didn't put the nut back in there tight enough. The braze might be fine, but since we're missing the nut, that's why it is leaking. And honestly, this thing's all dented up right here. This thing was, I'm glad I took it out. And regardless of the power steering pump gripping, I do feel a lot better about redoing the vacuum pump seal because that's something that will just gush engine oil if you don't address it. So <sighs> that's one culprit down. And this thing been leaking in that truck for a long time. Uh, and they've just been reloading it. You know it's bad when there's a funnel, you know, in the truck. One of those long skinny ones. All right. Hopefully this addresses the issue of the ABS light. I got a whole nother module and pump. This is the old one. Doesn't look like it was a reman or anything like that. Same, same. I'd slap this sucker in there and you crack these off real quick though. Pick and pull. Hopefully it was a score. But while I was down there, I got some stuff for my sport truck that's in the bag. The wiring for the door. There's an alarm sensor and an unlock sensor. Key in, key in entry. Airbag for the green truck since I harvested the ones out of it to put in the gold one. Hopefully that gets rid of the uh, light on the dash. And they had a couple dent sides down there. So I got a clutch pedal. I don't know, probably should have grabbed the transmission stuff while I was there, but I don't, I don't know much about Fords. But if I put a manual transmission in either one of these trucks, it'd be nice to have the man's mission. Tucked in up there. It's all the same squeeze. Pretty sure the brake pedal's the same also on the stick shift rigs. But let's go ahead and swap this out. Hopefully this does a trick. Well, I was going off of what somebody else said. These modules take a dump. And swap that out with the pump. Figured what the heck. Got the whole shebang. Actually did try it with just the module off my new to me unit and it didn't make any difference. So what I've done now is I swapped out the rear speed sensor, I plugged in some front ones, and then nothing changed, but I went by one at a time because each one of the wheel speed sensors is an ABS sensor. Checked each one individually. How you do that, you just drive the truck with only one of them plugged in. So with all of them plugged in, you have speed on the speedometer. Just a little bit goes up for five mile an hour, you're good. The back one had it running, nothing. Put a new sensor in there, nothing. So I took out this little jumper. Now the back one started working. Check the front too, this one over here is working. One over here, this side, she's no working. So I'm gonna go down to the shop, I have one. I believe, I mean, I've never had one of these snot work before, but we got a bad wire on this one. It's I think probably oming out, it's probably not doing its job. But here's the rear one, and here's one of the front ones. So I'm going to go swap this after I've already swapped that. I just want to make sure everything's covered so the next owner doesn't have to deal with none of this. That's my logic on it. I don't like leaving stuff undone. But it's a bummer that that didn't take care of it. So that is probably still good. If I would have done these couple little tests beforehand, it would have been all right. Hey, look at that truck. Woo. So that's a bummer. So let's go down to the shop because I'm tired of rolling around up here in the gravel. Thought this was gonna be a quick one minute kind of deal. But I did score those other goodies for the other trucks, which I'm pretty happy about. We don't need that. Okay, 
Okay, let's go down there. Yeah, I thought there was one of those bitches in here. I'll wrap it right up in there. I couldn't get the damn rotor off there. <laughs> couldn't even see the gap. It was so chunky. <sighs> it's that surface rust after so many years. So I went to take the hub off, and then I got that thing off. I need to kill her, though. What's the idea here? I think we'll get it some spray paint. Yeah. The old wax and grease remover. I didn't do it. I'll be damned. That'll probably do it. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, a little bit more. Yeah, this will be all right. Well, see if it'll focus. Focus. Holy oh, jeez. It's broken. Little chunk missing. Broke it, but yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, I swapped out that front one and I want to take it for a test drive and they're still on. I forgot to hook up the back one. The ABS lights went out, baby. Oh boy. It was two of my speed sensors. Um, all right, well, never mind. The lights are out. Well, good morning. It's crazy how life gets busy all of a sudden. We just been rocking and rolling all week. And we got an old boy coming by to look at buying the O2 today. He actually watches the channel. And he stopped by and bought something off me the other day. We left talking about this truck. So he's making another trip down here to test drive it and possibly purchase it. So I need to put two batteries in it. Just got the one right now. And clean out some of my stuff from in the cab. I was wanting to do it last night, but we just, we didn't get back from looking at jobs until, shoot, about 9.30. Ridiculous. Let's see how she cranks. She hasn't been fired up in a minute. Make sure you got the hoot nanny doing its hoot nanny. I had a... Oh, let's run the flash. ABS light, shut off, look at that. Oh, that's, that's nice, I like it. I just wanna, I don't have too much stuff in here. The truck is, it's ready to go. I just like to make sure it's super cleaned up before the old boy shows up to purchase. Yeah, we just got the jump pack in here. I did the, uh, I feel like I did a dump run with this old truck. Might run the vacuum cleaner through it one around. Let's get this hood popped. If it's a rig that's in the yard, I don't keep both batteries in it because, uh, if the batteries get left hooked onto it and it sits for like a month or two at a time, then it's kind of pointless. I was gonna let my old man drive this truck around for a while because he's got to bring his truck down for some maintenance. And well, I just have to let him drive something else. I figured this one was gonna be straight off the old block for him. Get something hot going. It is too cold. Oh, add water always.
for all the for all the plastic stuff I use Lucas slick mist put a little bit of that on there microfiber plus it smells pretty dang nice just cleans her up a touch so the whole truck's got a nice little sheen to it now there was a black widow underneath this truck the other day when I was doing a little bit of digging on that ABS thing maybe you saw that video so I want to spray underneath this truck one more time it's been sitting down here for 20 30 minutes there's no drips so I ain't covering nothing up obviously so that power steering issue we get that resolved this thing actually drives down the road really nice so let's fire up the old pressure weekend give this thing a little coat down there see if we can bust any of those gals out of their house yeah hooking up the second battery i had this part disconnected since i was doing it and so i just ended up with the coat so we can make some good contact you know what i mean mm -mm -mm. that's a problem well i caught it before it was completely frozen cold still kind of warm but my uncle just called he's borrowing one of my trucks right now and Mind you, the sun's not even up yet. An alternator is smoking and not charging. He's about 20 minutes away from the house from me, so that's like a 35 plus from his house. So, timing, not good. So I'm gonna get this knocked out. Funny enough, the guy I bought this truck from, his name is the same name as the guy that's coming to look at it today. So that'd be kind of cool if that worked out. Okay, just like that, done deal. Test drive went well. Small world how this story shook out because you guys remember that fortune from the beginning of this video? Yep, they came back down and bought the dually. Funny because they came down originally and you never know how things are going to shake out. They just came down to buy that silver third gen bed from me to finish off one of their projects. Got to talking with them a little bit and they said, hey, we follow you on YouTube. I said, oh, I appreciate that. Small world, huh? I said, oh yeah, you know what truck we're... We really like that you're building. Uh, which one? I said, oh, that O2 second gen, that six-speed truck. I said, well, really? Well, we'll get done tying down this bed. We'll go up to the top of the property, and I'll show you that old truck. Didn't think too much of it at the time, honestly, just kind of swapping truck stories. Go up there. They gave the truck a little once-over. Then they started asking, well, how much you think about selling this truck for? And honestly, at the time, the truck wasn't done. And I really try to make sure these rigs, when they leave here, are in the best possible condition I can get them in. You know, so they check all the boxes. Every known issue that I can find with the truck is addressed. And preventative maintenance is taken care of on them. Uh, and I just really like to have these trucks leave here in a condition I can trust. But I said I had a couple other people show interest in it online. And so, well, if they never hit you up on it again, I'm... I'm likely to come down and maybe buy this truck from you. I said, all right, we'll be in touch, see what happens. Literally the next day, he texts me and he says, hey, you got time next weekend? I'd like to come down and possibly test drive that truck. I said, sounds good with me. So I kind of went through the paces and checked off some of the stuff I knew that was wrong with it. A lot of it, which you saw in this video, and some of it was actually old footage I hadn't released yet. Just like clockwork, they showed back up next Saturday, took it for a test drive. Everything worked out, and, you know, to see the transformation for what this truck was when I originally, if you will, found it or purchased it, to what it turned into now, uh, it's just awesome. I really like seeing these trucks get saved. It's uh, just something I really enjoy, and one thing I think is really cool about this is that 4th Gen is going to be replaced by this Dually 2nd Gen, and I thought that was one of the coolest things the fact that he took that level of trust in the second gen to replace a fourth gen. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty dang old good. And, you know, I really like my fourth gens. I really like my second gens. But to uh, say I'm going to be daily driving the second gen, get rid of the fourth. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cowboy right there. So everything worked out good. And, you know, money aside, it was enough to keep the lights on. But... It's cool for me just to see these trucks get saved because 
going through all the paces, everything we did to this. I was actually just seeing some of the old footage. I forgot how many times I took the bed off of it, putting the fast in it, putting the B&W in there, you know, working on the front end, power steering pump, and uh, cleaning out the interior and just finding all the history of the truck as you're taking, you know, receipts out of it, finding stuff that uh, parts have been swapped, just learning the truck for over the years, but... She's a good old girl. I did take it for one last test rip before they showed up that morning. And it, honestly, it drives nicer than the sport truck. So I need to get some new stuff under the front end of that sport truck so it can compete with this one. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video. But she was sold before she was even posted for sale. You leave the key in the ignition? Got it in there? Okay, good deal. See you guys, thank you. Drive safe. All right, it's a productive morning. I still haven't had breakfast. The sun's been up for a minute now. Uncle, he limped this truck back up here. We just slapped a new alternator in it. He's on his way. And the AC compressor just took a took a dive. So that's a bummer. Yeah. Oh, well, he's got like 500 miles on it. So we got a total 600 miles on those new injectors. The German's been following me around. It's time to go eat breakfast. It is 10 o'clock. I've been down here for three and a half hours messing around. But productive day. Hopefully the old boy enjoys the second gen. It's nice to have another one back out in circulation and it was nice it went to Nevada. Good deal. Saved me a little bit of headache at the DMV, so good deal. Thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one, later.